Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in Christ today we celebrate the first Sunday after the Holy Pentecost. And we commemorate all the saints who ever been and who will be, hopefully, in our church. Uh, for this reason, we uh, heard today Holy Gospel, and uh, maybe you will ask yourself uh, why for this uh, feast is being appointed this uh, particular um, passage from uh, the Holy Gospel. Christ is addressing to the Apostles, saying that uh, everyone who will uh, confess me before man, I will also confess him before my Heavenly Father. And uh, anyone who will... Uh, deny me before man, I will also deny him before my heavenly father. And we see that this is, uh, these words of Christ have uh, um, a direct connection uh, to, to the saints of the, of the church because they are the ones who confessed Christ before the whole world. They became the pillars of the church. Christ is the cornerstone of the church and on which the church lays but also the holy saints of the church they are the pillars of the church uh, then we'll, we hear another uh, words which uh, for some of you might sound really awful and uh, really difficult to bear when, when uh, Christ is saying uh, anyone who is loving my father uh, anyone who loves his father or his mother his daughter or his son more than me is not worthy of me and uh, actually we see that the saints of the church they also fulfill these things and uh, here I ask you do not be perplexed or confused because uh, Christ does not contradict uh, another uh, commandment which he himself gave saying hey, uh, love your neighbor as yourself but uh, pay attention that this is the second great uh, commandment. First commandment was love your God from your, all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And uh, he's actually saying that anyone who loves more his father or his uh, mother or daughter or, or, or son more than me is not worthy on me, uh, is not worthy of me. So here he does not uh, ask us do not love our neighbors. Here, Christ wants us to put priorities. Christ, God, has to be first in the place. And if we learn to love God genuinely from the bottom of our heart, then we'll learn to love our neighbors and our, our relatives, our, our parents, our daughters and, and our sons. Because most of the time, uh, people um, have a really selfish, egocentric love, even for their parents, even for their um, daughters and sons. And uh, we see that for the reason Christ is uh, bringing just this particular group of people, because we mostly love them, our parents and, uh, and, and our, uh, um, our children. We, we are ready to give our life for them. But, and that's good, that's wonderful, because uh, uh, God himself, he gave this commandment, honor your parents, also love your children, because children are the blessing from God, and there is a, um, they uh, are a fruit of our love for one another, right? But, as I said, we have to put the priority, and uh, most of the time, as I, as I mentioned, that our love is very uh, selfish. Uh, is not that genuine love which we have to uh, must have. Uh, we pay more attention on uh, our parents, on our children. Uh, sometimes we uh, do their will instead to do the will of God. And we have to be really careful here. If uh, my parents telling me, do, do not go into, to the church, do not believe in Christ, to whom should I listen first? Of course, I should listen to Christ first, and then to my parents. And uh, even they would be angry with me, uh, I should not stop loving them. I should not stop um, respect them. 
Also about children. How many times we spend even some days when we supposed to be here in the church and give glory to Christ. We spend time with our children because they have activities on Sundays. And uh, then uh, the question is, who we indeed love more? Christ, who is uh, to, for whom we are supposed to bring honor and be present in the church and receive the Holy Communion of body and blood of Christ. Or we love our children who, for whom sake we go for all these kinds of activities. All these activities are good for them, are very beneficial. But remember what Christ says, give to God what belongs to God and give to the Caesar what belongs, uh, belongs to Caesar. So have, again, we have to put priorities. God first in the place, then other things. And, um, but as I said, Christ is uh, proposing us those people who are most clo the closest to us. But even we uh, find excuses to not come and visit Christ in the church, to visit Him in the church, even for other reasons. Let's say today is soccer game and I love soccer. I cannot go to the church. Today is uh, hockey game, is playoffs. I will go, no, I cannot. I cannot go because I'm, I, I love hockey. Then, wait a minute. Who will save you? Will you, and will hockey or soccer or, or going with your family uh, somewhere, um, uh, whatever, will that help you for your salvation? No, not at all. Right? So, as, again, even we have to go for a trip with our family. Even then we can find time to say, okay, everybody's still sleeping in, it's 8 o'clock in the morning, but I will wake up and I'll read um, from the Psalter. I will read from the Gospel. I cannot be in the church. I cannot uh, receive the Holy Communion in this Sunday, but at least I will read the Gospel of the day. I will spend at least an hour with Christ, and will, I will talk through the prayer with Christ in that day. And that will be a, a set for us. The, uh, this way will show that indeed Christ has priority over all other, uh, all other things. So brothers and sisters in Christ, let us not be ignorant. Because indeed if we do not learn here on the earth to love Christ, do you think we'll love Him there? If we do not learn to contemplate and be in communion with Christ here on the earth, do you think that will happen miraculously there? No. We ourselves will ask, Lord, who are you? Because we never knew you. Everything was very superficial and everything was very nominal. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, let us approach to Christ. Let us invite Him in our life. Let Him be guest in our mind, in our heart all the time. And let us invoke the, the grace of the Holy Spirit as we say, Lord, who sent down the Holy Spirit to thine apostles at the third hour, take him not from us, but renew us, uh, him in us who pray unto thee. We have to ask Christ to send upon us the grace of the Holy Spirit at all time. And renew the Holy Spirit in us at all time. Because Christ do that periodically. When we ask, then we do something wrong and the Holy Spirit live from us because nothing uh, uh, Holy Spirit lives in that heart which is clean blessed are those who are in of pure who, in pure heart for they shall see God so the pure heart can have be the uh, location be in dwelling of Christ be in dwelling of the Holy Spirit so brethren and sisters in Christ let us raise the good race let us look toward Christ Go toward Christ. If we cannot walk, let us, um, let us at, at least look toward Christ. Show Him that we want to be with Him. Lord, we want to be with You. If we don't want to be with You, You please be with us. If we deny You, You please do not deny us. And may Christ our God illumine our hearts, our mind, that we become indeed truly disciples of Christ, not only by name, but only also by heart, by mind, 
but by our life in Christ, which is genuine orthodoxy. To be in a relationship with Christ at all times. May Christ of God help us. God bless you. Amen.